Hi, my name's Ian Roberts, and we're here to do a plein air painting. Now, I'm out in the landscape, an arboretum in Cincinnati, with the idea of finding something that really excites me to paint. And that's kind of central to the whole thing. You've got to find something that excites you. And if you've been working primarily in the past from photographs, two-dimensional, already abstracted into flat, sitting there on your table, not moving. When you first come out and do plein air, if you haven't done it before, it's a little overwhelming because it's the whole big wide world. So the first thing that I would recommend is have some kind of viewfinder, some way of taking this unbelievably complex moving thing and reduce it so that you can frame it or crop it so that you can start moving the different parts of the painting or, the, or what you're choosing to fit more interesting in terms of design. Because design and composition, design, composition, is really what I want to talk about most. If you haven't got a good design, you're going to be painting and repainting and trying to figure out the painting as you go along and getting frustrated. And so what I want to do is show my technique, I could say, of developing a road map of where you want to go before you start. It's like creating your intention of what you want to do. And the clearer that intention, the clearer the road map, the clearer the final product will probably be. We tend to enter the painting from the bottom in the same way that we enter, you know, we think about how we're going to move into the landscape. So when you have a nice entrance like that, it pulls you back to where you want us to go. And then there's this tree here, this big, dark, beautiful shape here. I'm going to put the tree over here a bit. And then this big bush that runs out here that's kind of running more like this with the ivy and so on here. Um, but you can see that I'm thinking of it. I'm going to move these over to here. This one comes a little further. But you can see I'm thinking of this whole foreground here as shadow. One big shadow shape with these two patches of light leading to this beautiful dark back here in front of the tree. And then there's the branches coming up here and we catch the sunlight here in the tree and it's sort of a little bit more in shadow. And then there's going to be one or two little patches of sunlight and then I'm going to blue all this out, gray it out, so that we're saying, oh, I see, that's back there. It's like we almost artificially manufacture the creation of depth because we're trying to carve depth and we want a few simple color shapes that allow us to create that depth. And if we're not careful and we get too much detail, we get these marks that start reminding us that we're on a two-dimensional surface and we eliminate that sense of carving depth. So I like this and I think I'm going to paint it. So you see what I'm doing is I'm creating a really asymmetrical design. I'm really working on big simple shapes against what is going to be sort of more complicated shapes up there. And I really like playing those two things together so that we're, we're thinking in design. Um, so I'm going to mix up a color here. For the shadow of the grass. I'm just going to use a tiny little bit of terps for this big block in. And it's quite a cool color because I need to be able to contrast because a big part of this painting is going to be the contrast between warm and cool. I mean whenever you're painting sunlight in many respects you're painting big value shifts and I did a, a second video that talked about that, how we're talking about the shift in color and temperature and finding color intensity. This is a very low intensity color. It's not something you're going to find out of a tube, but it's quite cool too. 
And you'll see there's no sense, none, of trying to get detail or grass. I'm not the least bit interested in trying to get that right now. I'm just trying to get this thing in. The other thing is I'm going to create it darker at the bottom because gradations push you into the painting from dark to light. So I'm going to make it darker and perhaps a little duller at the bottom just to make sure that that gradation is pushing us into the painting. You know, a, a sculptor, when they have a clay sculpture, they, they have an armature of metal or wire and then they put the clay on it because the clay is not strong enough to hold itself up. And in a sense, the paint isn't strong enough to hold up as a painting without an armature either. And in this case, the armature is that interplay of the horizontal and the vertical. The horizontal, when you're out in the landscapes, everywhere. I think I mentioned that. What you want to do is interact the top and the bottom, the vertical, so that you've got a real interplay top to bottom in the painting. And so, the original idea was to take us in here. The, hor the, the, the horizon is here, and these are horizontals. And then it brings us into here. Now, this is the center of interest. The center of interest can just be the overlap with some slight sense of increasing the intensity of the color when you get there. It doesn't have to be a, a house or a horse or a person or something bright. It's just really the interplay of where the horizontal and vertical meet. And it automatically creates that intersection. And that's really where you want to create the center of interest. That's where you want to pull us. That's what, in a sense, you've done in terms, and this is what I mean in terms of the next 50 paintings, just working towards an idea and then the idea expressing it simply. Now what's happened is if you look here, you come here, and then you're getting pulled out to this part here. Because that color there is too intense. Do you see? I mean, do you see how this is working and then there's this color out here? Now watch what happens when I reduce the intensity of that color. I'm going to pull it back a little more. And how it releases your attention and you come back to here again. Thank you.